Hi, everybody. I'm Dr. John DeArden. Welcome to this month's Life Spa podcast. And this month, we have two very special guests, Lynn Goodwin and Kim Welsh. They're the founders and creators of our new partner in Guy called Farm True. Farm True is an amazing company. And they're here to tell us all about Guy, how it works, what they did, how they got started. And uh, I just think um, Guy is one of the most important aspects of Ayurvedic medicine. It's been used for thousands of years, and I think it's time for folks to really understand it at a deep level. So we're going to dive deep into ghee here in this podcast. Stay tuned. Stay with us. Uh, there's a lot to talk about. Kim, Lynn, thanks for being here. Welcome. Thanks Thank for having you. us. Thank you for having us. Oh, you're very welcome. Hey, so listen, you guys, you started this company. Um, why? why? Why Farm True? Mm. Uh, we started about seven years ago and we met studying Ayurveda together and that formed a great friendship. And um, we just started off on this path of learning about all the healthy living tools that Ayurveda had to offer. And a ghee really stuck out for us because um, it helped heal many aspects and things in our own life. So that bond we had, we thought um, we'd be able to share more about Ayurveda through the vehicle of sharing about ghee. I, after we finished our studies, we we were so overwhelmed with how simple it was and how many people in our lives had never heard of Ayurveda or ghee. And we just thought that was crazy. How did we go through our whole lives and never hear of this incredible superfood um, and this medicinal um, way of healing? And we just stared at each other and we just said, we have to do this. We have to talk to people about this. How can we do this? And at the time we were both in the nutrition field mm -hmm. and we were used to speaking to people about their food and, and, and things like that but we knew we had to do something bigger. We knew we wanted to reach more people and um, we wanted to have conversations about Ayurveda. We just knew ghee was that, the way to do that, to open the door. And um, it was kind of a lighter way to, to introduce a topic that could be foreign to mm -hmm. a lot of people, a lot of Westerners. So we thought, okay, we'll have this lighter spin on it and introduce this fantastic, delicious tasting uh, cooking oil, you know, is how a lot of people know it. And um, that would be the way to start the conversation. And then we could talk about all the benefits and all everything else that Ayurveda can offer. Mm. So that's why ghee, you just thought, you know, instead of ashwagandha, you just figured that would be <laughs> too many syllables. So you figured you just go with one syllable and go with ghee. We actually had that conversation because really saying Ayurveda, people would look back to at us and say, Ayurveda, huh? Like what, what is that? So <laughs> we were able to have an, an easier conversation that opened up the door to, to a bigger world. And you, we you could know, start about, like in farmer's markets and talk to people way, you know, cause we had yeah. a food product mm -hmm. and yeah. Right, and that's a good point. So yeah. how, so, so were there any personal, did you guys have any personal um, experiences with ghee that made you feel like it's gotta be ghee, this is like, you know, other than this only one syllable, but was there yeah. like, did you have like a personal experience with it? We're just like, this is so amazing. I just have to spend my life making ghee. Yeah. Yeah. We both have had those experiences for me. Um, it's funny how, you know, things cross your path many times in life and, and they come and go and you don't really take notice. And mm -hmm. ghee and Ayurveda probably was something that came and passed me many times without me taking notice. And um, at the time, my daughter was eight years old at the time, and she got very, very sick, very depleted. Um, it was a couple weeks of really bad illness, and we started taking her to Yale um, to be seen. And, and they diagnosed her with something that they said was going to be lifelong. Wow. And it was it was pretty severe. It was significant. And I was sitting in the waiting room one day, and my first touch point on Guy was. Oprah's show and Dr. Oz was mentioning ghee. And there was some talk about how it was great for the mind. Mm. My daughter was suffering some, some, from some severe OCD type symptoms um, associated with this. And so I said, I got to try this. And I remember going to the store and it, it, I bought some off the shelf and we both had this experience yeah. where we tried our first taste of ghee and we spit it out. It, it didn't taste what we thought it was going to taste like. And um, so uh, I started to make it and um, give it to my daughter. And it really started to help her symptoms almost instantly 
things just started to work better for her. She was so dry and depleted from this illness. The geese started to just, you know, re-nourish her. And um, I was like, I have to learn more about this. So I started learning more about the, the medicinal properties of it, as well as Ayurveda and um, went to a workshop. And then that's where Lynn and I met. Yeah. Yeah, and I had a, a little bit of a different experience than Kim for myself. Um, ghee, when I was learning about Ayurveda, I started to pay just more attention to my food and how it affected my body, how it affected my mind. And in a lot of ways, I was really depleted at the time and probably definitely leaning towards a very like minimal fat diet. Mm -hmm. So there was dryness, there was anxiety. And um, same thing, I tried ghee and didn't really love it, <laughs> the taste of it, but um, you know, I, I noticed a difference in how I felt and um, it just helped a lot of it bring everything with Ayurveda together. It just seemed like the catalyst. Um, and Kim and I also have a strong desire to support local and local food movements and we love to cook. So it just seemed to kind of be this like a great it's health, wellness, and also our desire and passion for cooking. But back to the taste of the ghee, what was really shocking to me is that I was like, it's just made from butter. Why doesn't it taste good? And so I started to learn more about what the flavors of the ghee um, were an essence of. It. And so I started to learn more about ghee that was made from grain fed cows versus ghee that was made from grass fed cows and started to really learn about the difference of the quality of ghee and the healing properties of ghee. Um, if the cow was made, you know, is, is eating grass, it's a sweeter taste, it's a smoother taste, um, it's very palatable versus um, ghee that's made from butter that's from grain fed cows can have a little bit of a sour taste to it. So that's where that whole, ooh, we didn't love it that came into play, but we figured out how to make really good ghee mm -hmm. from grass fed cows. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And in fact, um, you know, the science shows that when you take grass fed ghee versus grain fed ghee, there's 500 times more conjugated linoleic acid in it than grain fed ghee, which is the number one fatty acid to help us lose weight and burn fat, mm -hmm. which, you know, are years of eating, you know, bread for breakfast, lunch, and dinner, highly processed, right. uh, has caused an overwhelming amount of you know, bugs in our gut that are really good at getting carbohydrates and sugar into our bloodstream. And that's of course linked to the whole pre-diabetes epidemic that we have right now. So, so, and, and the other thing that you said that I thought was so cool was like, you, you're, you're, you know, Lynn, you, you talked about it for some anxiety and for your daughter, Kim, it was, uh, it was for your daughter's OCD. These are, when Ayurveda, we call them vata imbalances, right? So, so, and you think about, um, so I want you to talk more about about you know the nature of ghee for the mind, particularly in these days with COVID and the pandemic and the stress and our political situation and social justice, it's just so much to worry and stress about. Right. It's not even funny, you know. And the fact that that um, this time of year, in particular, is when you know ghee is actually um, maybe the best for us and help. Maybe you can explain some of those basic Ayurvedic principles as to why. Yeah, right. So this time of year, but also our culture and the time of life that we are, we're a depleted culture and we are running on um, less yeah. than more. And, and so from a standpoint of talking about why it's so good for us now in this time with every all the stress, but also this time of year, um, it's building of OGIS. And so that OGIS is that primal um, force of life that keeps us strong and our builds our immunity. And so uh, with taking a little bit of ghee every day, it helps with that vada imbalance of depletion of dryness um, to help give us more hydration, to give us more sustenance, um, to help kind of nourish all the tissues of the body, especially in the mind, because um, the stress can really deplete us, but also um, just being overworked and, you know, maybe not enough sleep the ghee can really nourish our mind and ground us and help us sleep better. Um, you already went into a little bit about the gut, the, the bugs in the gut. It's just so good for building immunity this time of year as well. Yeah, that aspect of pacifying the central nervous system. And mm -hmm. like Kim said, that nourishment and lubrication, it's, it's kind of, um, 
it's the antidote to the to the dryness mm -hmm. and the busyness and the fast pace the vata you know mm -hmm. aggravating things yeah, yeah it makes which we've all become I'm, very custom to yeah yeah it makes me intrigued I'm, I'm sure there's studies on ghee for anxiety you know i just haven't looked them up and i i want i will after we talk mm -hmm. i i think it'd be interesting to see to see that um because it's obviously um a, a really good healthy fat that mm -hmm. and fats help calm the nervous system. Oils are kind of dampening, right? And they calm us down. So in the winter, you know, all the oils are really harvested in the fall mm -hmm. for winter eating. And even ghee for that matter, um, traditionally, you know, the, in the spring, the cows are having their babies and the mama gets, the baby gets all the milk. And then throughout the summer, the baby gets the milk. And then by fall, the baby's big enough to sort of be on their own. So the, the excess, you know, is what they would use to help them weather the winter and you know in the alps when where cow country sort of started really people yeah. survived in the alps only because of their cows and their ability to make cheese and ghee and all that kind of stuff and though and those fats in the winter were insulating for them so it all made perfect sense you made this interesting point about hydration i have so many patients who say i, I drink so much water and i just always feel so dry so dry so dry and i think part of it is like you said um is uh, you know just the stress of our culture and the time and the vata aggravation, the overstimulation. But I did a podcast with a guy um, uh, who's a he's a PhD from University of Washington called Gerald Pollack, and he has he's created this this it's kind of a structured water kind of a thing where he proved that water inside of plants is different than water from the stream, and um, it has this special property to hydrate the body very very well in a completely different way. Like when you eat vegetables or you juice them, <clears throat> you juice them, you're gonna hydrate in a way that's completely different than just drinking, you know, bottled water or whatever. And, um, and he did all the science and wrote a book about it, published studies. He's, he's a researcher from University of Washington. It's like a big deal. And, and he told me, he said, and he said, I studied many different things for, to, to support what would actually create what he called this EZ water. And he said that the number one thing that caused the, 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 the hydration in, in of all the foods and herbs, and I tested all that, ghee was the number one. Yeah, the I totally was, believe that. That is probably the biggest remedy that is in our house and, and around our workplace. When people start to feel a little under the weather, weather they're dry, they have a headache, um, they're having trouble sleeping, they're having trouble with anxiety or focus put a little ghee in your water, your hot water, your tea, and you feel instant mm -hmm. hydration. Um, not only um, from like that dry feeling in your mouth, but it helps with all kinds of regularity. And um, I think it's, it's instant. I have, my daughter's a singer. She is a tight, dry voice. Mm -hmm. She drinks ghee and water and it's just like there, there's the remedy right there. So we get so dry in all the membranes and the ghee is such an incredible remedy for that. Yeah, that is so important because people are so dehydrated mm -hmm. and they're so vata aggravated. And to just think of simple putting a little ghee in some hot water, obviously, you know, the whole bulletproof coffee thing blew up and that was originally ghee and coffee. And, mm -hmm. and ghee is also <clears throat> what we call an Ayurveda and Anupan, a carrier of, mm -hmm. of whatever, right? Talk to us about how ghee can help, you know, not just hydrate you, but nourish you. Right. So ghee is considered a superior carrier oil um, in, in, in herbalism in general, but because we talked about that su the supreme hydration effect, not only can the ghee bind to whatever nutrients you're cooking and take them deeper into the tissues, but they bind to the, the medicinal effects and of the herbs and can make the efficacy so much stronger. So whatever you're trying to bring into your body, it, it can actually almost supercharge it. It's amazing. We use ghee as a base oil in almost everything we make. So we make a nasal oil. Um, Nazi, you're so familiar with that, right? So when you think about putting oil in your nose, so many people are stuffy all the time and they think they need to, you know, clean it out or blow their nose. But that dryness is really, you know, what's causing that stuffiness is simple things like putting a little ghee in your nose just clears it up so you can breathe free again. And now you feel clear and focused. And, um, but that ghee makes a huge difference in, in a lot of different remedy lines um, 
for, as a carrier, like you said, but also topically. Yeah. topically, right? Exactly. It will really supercharge the the power of the herbs that you're infusing into the oil. And that absorbability, like, like infusing and carrying whatever nutrients mm-hmm. and herbal remedies, but it's like that absorbability you can feel if you even put it on your skin, like topically, it just, it soaks it in. Um, there's nothing left over, like residue. Wise. Yeah. Yeah. Just taking D and putting it on your skin. And if it just soaks in so nice, you know, your body is just drinking it up and it, it, it won't leave a, like a really greasy residue, like maybe coconut oil would. Um, this is so absorb. It's so the absorb is absorb is, oh my goodness. The so absorbability. <laughs> That's a tongue twister. Absorbability. When you're talking so much, we start yeah. to lose the words. <laughs> but so it's pretty amazing. And, and even just keeping it by the stove for burns or rubbing into your hands when you're doing dishes, just a tiny bit goes a long way um, to keep those cuticles from cracking and things like that. Well, wow, that's great. And I wonder if it's because, you know, ghee is the highest source of butyric acid on the planet as a food. And butyric acid is the major fatty acid in ghee. And butyric acid is um, a fatty acid that our gut makes. There's bugs in your gut that called Clostridium butyricum that make this butyric acid, which heals your gut and supports a lot of things inside your gut. But what it also does, it feeds the microbiome. Mm -hmm. So when you talked about that, putting it on your skin, we have bugs on our skin. Anywhere you have skin, the respiratory tract, intestinal tract, outside skin, you have bugs, microbes, and they have to be good guys. So you want to keep them fed. But you know, in you know, in America, particularly here in Colorado, oh my God, everybody gets so dry here because we're a mile high, you know, and it's so dry, um, and the skin dries out, and the bugs just go like, I think I'm moving to Florida where it's warm and moist, and the people have some oil on their skin, you know. So we just, you know, have this very dry kind of kind of micro, you know, microbiome vac- vacant skin that really destroys the function of the skin. So what you're saying is putting the ghee on the skin has such a beautiful effect of uh, hydrating the skin because it does the hydration that we know uh, internally as well, but it also puts a layer of food on the skin for the bugs that they can eat. And the same thing happens inside your intestinal tract as well. Absolutely. I, I, I have more of a cough in nature, um, but I've always been very dry because I've been depleted in many ways. And I just remember the effects of putting oil on my feet, ghee, um, and oil together and how hydrating that was, um, using like something that's ghee based on your lips versus a petroleum based thing. You know, in the winter, so many people just pull out the petroleum based things and they just keep doing it and doing it and doing it. And that's one of the things we hear from a lot of people is wow, ghee really heals. It's not just covering it up. It's really healing the chap, the dryness. Um, and I think that that's the difference that's food because it's not just yeah. taking care of the symptoms, but it's actually healing and giving your skin what it needs to, to flourish. And I think there's also this, and we find when we talk to some of our customers or people that come to workshops that it shifts the intention behind what they're, how they're caring for themselves. Mm. There's something about this um, coming from an aspect of nourishing myself or um, abhyanga, like oil, like any kind of protective layer you're putting on the body. It people feel like, gosh, I'm really doing something good for myself mm. or for my family. And um, I don't know, that adds another element of healing or of wellness. Mm-hmm. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, quite amazing. So I want to talk more about the benefits of ghee, but before I do that. I want to talk about Farm True and your ghee and what makes your ghee so special. You know, I mean, I definitely, you know, you sent us some ghee a while back when we first, you know, joined forces here and everybody was blown away by the taste. It just tasted so good and so different. It was almost like, um, it was almost like cream. I know uh, we, uh, we have this, we have, we use ghee in our cleanses, right? And we had, and uh, Woman's World Magazine called us up once and they said, um, will you, you know, give us a cleanse if that we could have our folks try and we could maybe write about it. I said, well, yeah, you just go to my website at lifespot.com, type in short home cleanse and get our ebook. It's a free 40 page ebook, how to do a cleanse with ghee. And they did it. And, um, and uh, they had like 40 people do the cleanse. They had people said that we, people lost like, you know, 11 pounds in the four or five days or in a week. It was just, if we had a, such amazing results, we want to do a feature story on your ghee cleanse. And I said, oh, that's great. So, so they wrote the story. And what they wrote 
about it was they, they wrote, it was like Madison Avenue took over Ayurveda. It was like, they made the ghee sound like it was this most lux luxurious cream that you're drinking, like a porridge of the tastiest ghee. And I was like, oh my God, you know, I, I never thought about, you know, you know, anyway, when you retasted your ghee, it was like that article. It was like, it was like, this is the ghee that they wrote about in that article, which is nothing like the regular ghee you taste because you were first impression when you ghee, when you first took it, you both said, well, ah, I'm not so sure about this. You right. know, it's good for cooking, but I'm not sure I'm going to put it on my, my, my toast. But when you do it right, like you guys have done, it tastes like something like a gourmet treat. And that's what they called it, a gourmet treat. And it is that what you made. And that's special. So I want to talk about, you know, what is it that makes Farm True taste so good? Like, what's the secret? Well, that's so funny. That's so funny. <laughs> well, we, we do have to give some credit to the cows, right? Because <laughs> really, be the, cow, yeah. the cows yeah. really the source. <laughs> yeah, they are the source. And the farmers that treat for, the, treat the, for those cows and care for those cows, that's like, that's really... Um, the essence around the ghee and why it's so fantastic. Um, well, but we do really do put a lot of care into how we actually manufacture and make ghee. People come into our facility and they say, wow, you still do it all by hand oh, yeah. and a lot, uh, you know, a lot of jars. <laughs> and um, I think that there is something to say about just the care that we take with the product and the quality um, insurance that we put around it to make sure that we do everything in small batches. We always have an eye on everything. We know exactly yeah. how that butter should cook, how long it takes, um, the smell, the clarity of it. Um, we've had it tested um, to make sure that it's lactose and casein free, that we really truly are cooking it slow and long and not just a quick clarified butter, right? So we put a lot of time and um, care into that, the intentions mm -hmm. in our kitchen um, people say, well, what makes it Ayurvedic? And um, as we mentioned, a big portion of that is just the fact that it's coming from grass-fed cows, that the cow is a healthy cow. It has, um, you know, it's, it's roaming free and eating grass and um, it's well cared for. So that's the essence of the milk that's coming out of that cow. But also um, just the space that we actually prepare the ghee in is it's a very um, intention-based space. We, we know what we're making is healing somebody. Mm -hmm. So we take that very seriously. We've been um, presented with the opportunity many times to go with a less expensive uh, butter, non-US non butter, uh, maybe not as high a butter fat, maybe not 100% grass fed, and we've had to kind of really make those tough business decisions and say, well, we're going to need to stick with the way we do it because we know that what we're making is going to heal somebody. And um, if somebody else wants to make, you know, a, a less superior ghee out there, let them. But we really wanted to keep that standard high so that we could feel that every jar that goes out there is really going to help somebody in some way. Um, so I think that's one of the things that makes us different because yeah. we really do focus on keeping that source, that connection to the farm, knowing the farmers, knowing how they're treating their cows, knowing that they're getting grass um, and that just the practices are beautiful. Yeah, I think it's like when the first time that we had talked um, and we had shared our view with you. I think from the conversation, we just felt like we're, we always seek to work with farmers or um, people in business that are aligned in the same mm. mission and um, have similar goals. So staying true to that along the way, um, I think it just ultimately always bring forth the best product. Mm. Um, and the taste of it always, you know, you can tell, you can tell immediately when you taste it, the quality of it. So mm -hmm. And smell it. You can taste it as soon as you it. smell it. Yeah. <clears throat> Yeah, it's unbelievably different than any other ghee that we've tasted. And trust me, we tasted a lot of ghee <laughs> because everybody, so wants us to, <laughs> yes. everybody wants us to carry their ghee. And, and uh, you know, um, you mentioned something, Kim, that I thought was really interesting. You test it to make sure there's no uh, lactose and ghee is typically lactose, casein and whey free, which mm -hmm. are all the milk solids that people have issues with when they think of dairy. So it's in a way a very dairy free product in a way, it's just the actual oil. Um, um, 
is that something that that uh, other companies do as well, or they don't do that, and then you end up with a product that actually has some residual casein or lactose or, or protein in it? Right. Yeah. No, there are. When we first started this, there weren't very many U.S. ski companies, and now there are, there are so many. And and you have to do your research. You have to look for um, the companies that are doing testing, and um, the process really is what creates that end product that is lactose and casein free. If you're rushing the process, it's not going to test lactose and casein free. It really does have to cook for a very long period over low heat. And there has to be a, a, a really thorough filtering process. Um, so yeah, there are companies that are mass producing ghee, um, not only most likely not using the highest quality butter um, and, and possibly not the the healthiest cows, but then on top of that, you've got the process that's rushed as well. So with many food products, you really do have to look to see what's going on behind the label. And um, I think one of the things you were talking about using the senses too, is the smell. Like you can taste it when you smell it. Like we, I know I've tasted ghee before. It almost smells like cheese, mm -hmm. you know, there's like more, something more dairy in it. And then um, ours, we have more of like a caramelized, kind of a, mm. a, a golden flavor, like a, a rich flavor. To yeah. yeah. Yeah, that's weird yes. because, you know, the, the, the acrylamides that are made when you overheat something mm -hmm. um, is, you know, generally which creates that caramelizing effect, which is considered to be, you know, and, and, and people get that when they drink their coffee, there's acrylamides. I mean, there's anything you heat up, you're going to get that. So people, mm -hmm. you know, you read articles and they find out this bad for you, but everything has it. But the whole Ayurvedic approach was low heat and slow heat. Well, so when you're slow, making yeah. it, you're getting this sort of not, you're getting this caramel flavor, not from the acrylamides, which are bad for you. Mm. You're getting that from the actual taste and the quality of the oil itself, which the is sweetness, completely, yeah. that sweetness comes completely different. And when they talk about the sweetness of ghee in Ayurvedic text, they're not talking about some burnt product, some caramelized right. product. You're talking about, what you guys do and yeah. most products you taste out there ghee just tastes like really bad butter like really right. bad unsalted butter but what your taste is has this very sweet incredibly gourmet silky silky smooth quality and texture i've never seen anything like it and it must be because you cook it so slowly at such a low heat having that patience that will which we don't have in our color i want to like boom boom give me a yeah. you know i want to make it i want to pump them out more the better you know, but you can't squeeze, you know, production out of nature. It's just got its own time, right? No, it is actually a very meditative process. It's a beautiful process. When we, we produce a lot of different um, products here and when it's ghee day, people enjoy that. Yeah. Oh, it's ghee day. Like it's just, it's a very beautiful process to make ghee. And um, we've tried it other ways, you know, as we started our business, we were like, oh, well, you know, these companies are doing it this way. And it didn't take us long to realize, no, you just don't mess with the good thing. This is the way it's supposed to be done. And um, we'll just tell the story and hopefully that will be good because it's really hard to compete with, you know, big companies that do a lot of um, big disc, deep discounts and they cut the costs and they can purchase it huge quantities from big farms overseas. Um, but we've stuck with it and we're really happy we have because we hear from our customers just even having this conversation with you, it's so rewarding to hear that people appreciate that extra effort. Mm -hmm. And we really do want to get the word out there that farmers deserve to get paid for a higher quality right. product. So buying cheap butter isn't doing anybody in our country any good and or milk. Um, you know, th there are farmers, there are a lot of US farmers that are trying to do the right thing to give their, their cattle the, the best, um, life that they can and it costs money and we need to pay for that as consumers we need to know that it's going to cost a little more to um buy a higher quality product and in turn the farmers get paid what they need for their product mm -hmm. and that's really important to us because i'm sure you've heard over the last few years hundreds and hundreds of u.s dairy farmers have closed so now more than ever we want to keep our our food yeah. close to home right we'll need yeah. it <laughs> You mentioned um, one time we were speaking and you guys mentioned that, well, you know, when, when you, uh, when they say grass fed, whatever, 
you know, it's pretty clear in America, and I, you know, I was told this that there is no such thing as a hundred percent grass fed because grass doesn't grow year round. You know, we have a thing called winter where the grass isn't <laughs> growing, and you know, and they really they have to supplement with grain, and um, and um, and that's what our last key supplier said they do. It's for a big chunk of the time they're feeding them with grain, so it's not a hundred percent grass fed. Um, and we couldn't say 100% grass fed, but you guys have done something really pretty cool, right? Where you where you actually don't buy the you know the, you don't buy the, the the ghee from the winter months. You stockpile it, right? Tell me about how you do that to make sure it's 100% grass fed. Right. Well, so here in the Northeast, which is we work with over 30 farms in the Northeast area, and right we get the brutal winters. Um, and there are some farmers who are able to dry off their cows in the winter and um, not supplement with grain. Um, if they're not milking them, then they don't take, need as much um, energy. But for the most part, dairy farmers can't sustain themselves that way. So in the winter, they do have to supplement with grain or a, you know, non-GMO barley or something to, to help them just get through the winter. Uh, we pretty much all of the butter that we purchase is after the springtime, the cows have calf, and then we order all our butter up until the fall. Um, we are lucky enough to have a facility to store that butter and be able to use it through the winter and not have to purchase any butter that's been grain fed. Yeah, I think that's brilliant. And I think you're probably the only 100% grass fed company on the planet that's selling any type of dairy product. <laughs> I think it's brilliant. Really, it's true. I mean, unless you can tell me one, you don't have to tell me one if you know one. But I don't think, uh, I don't think there are really because who does that? You know, I that's know. a lot. Of, that's a lot. You know. No, it's we're we really are lucky um, enough to be able to do that and store it, and we have our own facility. Um, I think that's huge to be able to to do that, and um, it, it's costly to do that too, as you can imagine. So, as a small yeah. business. It, it's sure. we have to be strategic about it and be you know be really, really careful that we order enough that we don't run out and that also that we don't order too much so it's, um it's absolutely it's tricky. tricky you know it's, it's really tricky. you guys and i think that's you know part of why you're guys are being so successful is because you everything you're saying you take the time to cook it right the slow cooking the low heat the love the care all that you know, matters. And then of course, you know, doing the right thing to get the right, you know, raw material and, you know, taking those extra steps, it's not common. That's for sure. No. And really to have a relationship with the farms and the farmers. I mean, Lynn was just on the phone this morning with a farmer and like, that's the thing is keeping those relationships strong. So they understand the mission behind what we're doing is to also support them. And, um, they, they just, just it's just a beautiful thing it's, it's really nice to still stay connected that way that's we're really focused on doing that and we're also not mass there's not mass distribution so mm -hmm. we made the decision to keep uh you know our company where sure we can supply it and and all of that but we haven't you know it hasn't been to take on the world with <laughs> just selling all over the place so we're able to kind of have our hands hands on it you know and it not get out of control and work with people who really see the value in paying for what they're purchasing and understand that there's a farmer behind our product that needs to get paid as well. Yeah. So you probably remember we talked about once where my, my wife and I went to Europe once doing a kind of a dairy study on, you know, how, you know, on dairy and cheese and ghee and cows and pastures and all that. And we spoke last time, you said to me that whenever you go talk to the farmers and you talk about how cool the cows are, they don't want to talk about the cows. They want to talk about the land, the pastures, and uh, and um, you know, in uh, in places like where you're growing cows, very similar, like in Austria, they they are very um, they, they they they're very proud of the fact that within a square parcel of land, there's like 30 different species of grasses and tall grasses and short fescues and all these different you know layers and layers and layers of of uh, food that these that have different bugs and different microbes and, and different microbiomes that these cows are eating compared to uh, like here in the Colorado and in the West, 
It's just grass. It's one grass. And if you look into the grass and you look in there, this is one blade of grass and then dirt. You know, mm -hmm. it's a monoculture that these cows are eating. And what you guys are doing is, you know, your cows are being fed by such a diverse amount of food with diverse amount of microbiome that it's changing. You know, that's, it's grass fed on steroids. It's another level of grass fed, you know what I mean? So talk to me about what, what when you talk to the farmers, you know, what do they say about their, about their pastures? Well, a lot of it, we don't even understand. They're so smart. These farmers, they're like, they, what they know about the land and the science behind it is incredible. And you're right. It's not like one blade of glass grass. They're talking about the different clovers that'll come through at different times of the year and how it'll affect the taste of the milk and certain plants that they'll put in certain uh, ground covers they'll put into it choke out, you know, harmful weeds. It's fascinating um, because certain grasses or weeds can make a cow sick. And so instead of putting down, you know, chemicals in the ground, they really learn the natural way how to control all that. And it creates this really diverse environment for the cows. And you can tell that, you know, people always say, how can you tell when a cow is happy? You, if you go out into the middle of a hundred cows, mm -hmm. You can tell if they're happy or not. <laughs> you know, we've really, seen the opposite with farms, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. right. Really? Yeah. Wow. So, yeah, um, but they do want to talk about the land for a really long time. Mm -hmm. We absorb as much as we can of it, and um, you know, they're they are stewards of the land. And this generation that's coming up too, um, they're trying to. They're really. It's an uphill battle. They're trying to keep something alive that they're grandfathers and, yeah. and their grandfathers started and it's a whole different game with looking at sustainable farming and um it's it's really interesting i it's a fascinating industry to see changing so quickly um and we feel really grateful to be supporting that yeah yeah no it's amazing when i was uh when i was we were in austria and we were driving and we saw i think i told you the story we saw some I saw this guy way up on the top of this mountain in his pasture. And uh, so we took these switchbacks up to kind of see what he was doing. And he had this big old sickle and he was like sickling out weeds in his pasture. I'm going like, are you kidding me? This guy's like cutting this entire massive side of the mountain with a sickle? Like what? So I, we parked the car and I ran up to, to kind of meet him. And, and uh, he spoke German, didn't speak a word of English. And <laughs> we were like, you know, sort of trying to sign. I mean, it was, it, but we started communicating and he let me sickle for a while. And, and I, and I, and he showed me the ones to cut back, you know, and there were a couple of them. He said, it would, he, you know, told me that the cows would get sick if they ate this, you know what I mean? And they would, and he'd go out there and he'd cut it down. Now he, you know, and, and it's sort of the similar thing with your farmers. They, they put, you know, certain ground covers to kind of, to kind of starve out any weeds that can, because if the cows eat certain things, it actually makes the cow sick and uncomfortable, unhappy. It makes the milk bad. And it's like a whole thing. And that was a bio, you know, it was a organic bio leak farm in Austria. You're got your, all your farms are organic. And, mm -hmm. and uh, <clears throat> so they really care about what grows on that pasture. Not just open the door, go out and eat some grass. It's, it's really thought, you know, really well thought out what yeah. they're actually eating every day, which is, we don't think about that. When you think about really good you know, farming and really good healthy cows, what they put in their mouth every day is really thought out, not just like here's some grain and feed them up so they're right. full. Right, and that story needs to be told more because I think what um, a lot in our country right now, we have heard so much negative press around dairy farms and mm -hmm. um, how cows are treated and, um, and and that happens out there. There's, there's definitely um, that aspect to the industry but we really want to tell more of these stories like what you're sharing, but also our stories as well, because there are really great farms out there. You just have to do a little bit of digging, not even much, just, mm. you know, you can really tell when a farm is um, doing, you know, really great practices um, by just looking or talking to people. We have farms here where I remember we would drive to a farmer's market, one of the largest co-ops in our area, and it was beautiful land with beautiful barns. And we were like, where are the cows? We never saw a cow. And we just did some digging and we were like, oh, the, the cows are, they're in these beautiful facilities. I mean, state-of-the-art facilities with roofs that come up and breezes and 
clean. I bet you probably can eat off the floor, but the cow's feet never touch grass. They never go outside and thousands of acres of land. And so it was just like, wow, like it's a beautiful carton with this cow on the front with grass in the back. And so we can see how the American consumers can feel duped. And so the only way to kind of combat that is keep telling the stories of the farmers out there that are doing it or letting their cows out there eating grass, they're taking care of the land. And, um, and you, can find, you can find good products out there. And just educating people to um, take initiative to learn more about where their food's coming from. Mm -hmm. And I think because of COVID, more people have looked to local farms for that. So I think standards mm -hmm. are being set so that the quality is up there. Mm -hmm. So the, the, uh, that is, a, you mentioned uh, uh, how, you know, the, the treatment of the animals is so critical. And that's something that you guys, you guys really screen all your farms really well for that. It doesn't just have to be organic. You want to make sure that there's that they're really caring for the cows in a real, you know, you know, beautiful, sustainable manner, right? Absolutely, yeah. That's what they care for. So there's, there's standards actually too for farms to have certifications, just like certified organic, there's certified humane. And that's something we're really proud to say that the farms that we use are certified humane. And um, that's something to keep up with regulations is extra work for them. Um, just from paperwork and an administrative standpoint, but fees, they do yeah. it. Yeah, yeah, fees. Fees. Yeah. Yeah. A lot of farms aren't able to do that. There, you know, there are a couple farmers on the farm and they may be really, you know, just doing it beautifully and um, humanely raising their cattle, but they don't have staff to go in and right. put the paperwork for these certifications. And so, um, you know, there still are some farms out there that are doing a great job that aren't certified and people can find them. And it's amazing just what you can find when you drive down the road and at least where we live, you know, I'm sure it's different in suburbs of Chicago and stuff, <laughs> but like you could probably still find quite a few farms, but yeah. Yeah, well, you guys live in a, <clears throat> a really, <clears throat> a really lush area, you know, where, where yeah. um, it's just so beautiful, those areas. I, I want to come visit someday. <laughs> <laughs> to see what you guys are doing. So um, let's uh, let's talk a little bit about um, some more. Go back to some of more of the the health benefits of ghee, and um, you know some of the benefits of ghee, like in Ayurveda. You know, ghee is used for many reasons, but it's also used for cleansing, um, and it's a it's a really amazing fat for you know what obviously it's got the butyric acid. And the ghee, the butyric acid has a healing effect for the skin, just like the skin on the outside. You said skin on the inside is hydrated, supported, it feeds the microbiome of the skin. The colon cells use but butyric acid to drive energy for them so they function well. And the major energy source of that is butyric acid. The, you know, it's number one governor of gut immunity, which is 70% of our immune response. And interestingly, New studies have shown that the gut immunity is directly linked to respiratory immunity. So we kind of made a joke before, like, you know, ghee cures COVID. <laughs> Obviously, no, it doesn't. <laughs> but, um, but what ghee does is it supports the health of the intestinal microbiome. And they used to think that the respiratory microbiome immunity in your, in your lungs was completely sterile, that there were no bugs at all. And now they know that the lungs are loaded with bugs and there's a whole microbiome there. And they also found that, that the relationship between the gut and the respiratory microbiomes are intimate, they're bi-directional. So if your gut is screwed up, then, you're, and then your, your gut immunity, which is 70% of your immune, immune response is, is screwed up, then your respiratory immunity is going to be compromised as well. So, you know, this understanding in Ayurveda that we must balance vata first, which is the, the air quality, the nervous system quality, because there's two times as many imbalances in Ayurveda in vata, the nervous system, as there is in pitta, which is the fire and digestion and metabolic activities. And there's, you know, so it's twice as many imbalances in vata as pitta and two times as many in pitta as kapha. So, so what happens is kapha is the unctuous one. That's the one that's stable, which already has like built-in ghee. It doesn't have to worry. But it's already <laughs> kind of like unctuous. It's the, it's the spring constitution where it, it rains in the spring and the earth is saturated with water and very hydrated by nature. 
where in the winter time, there is no, it's dry, even the water's dry, it's snow, rain, ice, you know, it's just very dry. Our skin dries out, our intestinal tract dries out. So, so those imbalances of vata um, are really remedied by, you know, by ghee and, and taking ghee inside your intestinal tract really restores that deep healing. And then there's a process in Ayurveda called lipophilic mediated detoxification, which means <laughs> fats like fats, lipids like lipids. So you take a fat like ghee, put it in your body, a really clean fat like you guys have, and everything's been taken out of it, right? So all the milk solids and the whey and the casein, it's all been taken out of it. So it's, it's, it's lipophilic, it's hydrophilic. It wants, it's going to want to attract things to it. So the other fats that are there are going to be attached to it to fill the void. And there's many studies showing how fats can attract fats and detoxify you. Well, there's studies on ghee where they found that people took ghee for seven days during a cleanse, they had a significant number of reduction. It was like 46% reduction. They measured nine different PCBs and uh, 11 different pesticides. And they found there was like a 46% reduction in the, in the uh, PCBs and a 56 reduction in pesticides. We don't realize it, but all the pesticides that are on the foods that you eat, they're generally not digested. They end up going into your intestinal tract because they weren't broken down. They're too big to get into your blood. So they go into your lymph and your lymph dumps them in your fat and your brain. They just stay there for a lifetime until you're you know, older. And then they start rearing their ugly head and they degenerate and break us down and accelerate aging, right? right. So the ghee... The, the, you know, the, the, the lipophilic mediated detox with ghee attaches to those impurities and pulls them out of your body. So like these people that who took this detox, you know, they were healthy people, but they pulled out all these pesticides. Where did they come from? Well, they, they came from the storage centers. And that's what the, you know, Ayurveda understood even thousands of years ago that there were chemicals and toxicants and toxins in the environment and that, and that, that our body even produces that need to come out of our body they can really maintain a level of health mm -hmm. and not just a level of health that you feel good in your body. But Ayurveda was really about, like you said in the very beginning, the mind, the mental clarity and awareness. So you have the clarity to, to um, not only be stable and not have depression or anxiety, but they were after something even higher vibration than that. They were after a level of self-awareness to become more aware of the subtle. And this is my favorite little Thing about Ayurveda is that they would say that the more subtle something is, the more powerful it is. Mm -hmm. But our awareness, our, first of all, our, our, our instruments aren't sensitive enough to measure a lot of the subtle things, like the microbiome. You can't see them, but they're right. like super powerful, right? But there's more, so many more subtle things, like the influence when a farmer yells at their crops or grabs it and harvests it and brings it in or beats their cows or whatever and treats them poorly and they're not happy. Those emotions have been shown scientifically to be impregnated into that animal. Right. If you take a healthy person next to a social disrupted person, the bugs in the social disrupted person is going to actually become and change the bugs in the healthy person to become angry or, or ang anxious or worried or whatever. So when you're around that kind of stress and you treat the animals in a poor way, like most of the meats and things are in America, <clears throat> no wonder why people, I mean, there's no better reason in the world to be a vegetarian than the way animals are treated, right? Absolutely. But when you treat them properly and they, they feel safe and they feel secure and they love you and they come up and they start nudging you and stuff and they're happy and they're fed properly, that emotion, Ayurveda, you, you guys know, would always say, you know, who harvests, who grew, who carried the food to the market, who prepared them. All those emotions are impregnated into the microbes that when we ingest that milk, food, spinach, broccoli, whatever it is, there's bugs on that stuff. And right. there's a charge there. And that emotional charge of that bug or a pesticide charge becomes, it gets delivered into our genetic code through a process called sort of scientific, but it's called horizontal genetic transfer of genetic material. The bugs that we eat transfer that genetic information to our genetic information so we can figure out you know, what's coming down the pike and stay alive and stay ahead of the curve, right? So the value of ghee from the perspective of detoxing, but also creating this environment for the body can be healed mm. and balanced in vata 
So the mind can become still and more self-aware. And then when it's, it's sort of like the hurricane, is it got a calm center and supports activity in the winds. Solar system has a calm center, a thing called the sun. Everything in the nature and the universe is based on this, this experience. We're supposed to have that too, that right. inner calm. And Gi is designed, it's written in the Vedic text that Gi supports the mind to calm it down, create that inner calm that we should hail from. But most of us are spinning out in the, wind, in the winds of the hurricane, stressing out, dodging refrigerators and who knows else what's out there, <laughs> taking their life in their hands, just living, you know, yeah. home on the weekends, recovering, and you know, all that. But Ayurveda is all about, no man, you gotta, you gotta pull back that bow, find that inner silence. And Gi is a food that heals the, it heals the four protective barriers, which is your blood brain barrier, your respiratory tract, your intestinal tract, and your outer skin. Those are governed by bugs. And, and if those bugs are, are altered or, and the environment's compromised, you lose the protection of the environment. And that stresses out the whole nervous system and we amp up and then the brain goes, how do I feel good? Well, give me a cup of coffee or give me some candy or give me some comfort food or some donuts or whatever. And then, then that's what happens. And, and then we have a culture that wants to make money on that. So that becomes the number one thing. And now we're all, we lose the beauty and the purity of, of something as simple as right. Gi. All and those uh, things are taking you away from that inner calm, right? They're all taking you away from that inner calm that you spoke about. Uh, all the extra things we grab for, yeah. um, they're, they're leading us in the wrong direction. So cooking with ghee, adding it to your food, you know, uh, cleansing with ghee, which we do, you know, a couple of times a year um, together as groups. I mean, the it's so invaluable. And I just can't thank you guys enough for doing what you're doing because the ghee that we, we get from you is so special. Mm -hmm. um, and it's, you know, like you said, that first taste of ghee that you get in the store is, uh, I'm not sure I can really do this. Um, <laughs> But your ghee is like, it tastes somehow, I don't know. It tastes like you put honey in it. You're not putting honey in it. Or is you no, no, <laughs> no, no, we would no, no, no. But I will say um, in regards to your cleanse, which we've done before, I've done many of your cleanses. And I, I am somebody who's done many different types of cleanses in my life. And the Colorado cleanse was the first time mm. I ever felt like I was in that inner calm that when you see, you used to call it like that inner calm, because there's something about the cleanse with the ghee that can ground you and make you feel satiated still, even though you're cleansing. And it is truly the only cleanse that I've ever had success on. And I think it's a beautiful thing. A lot of people have this kind of, I don't know if I can do a cleanse and I don't know, we drink ghee and all that, but when when you're talking, just going back to what you're talking about, the inner calm, that's the feeling that I got when the first time I ever did your Colorado cleanse, because it is so satiating to take that much ghee while you're cleansing. And um, it's, it's, it's a beautiful cleanse. And so we're really excited to be a part of it. We promote it to everyone that we talk to. And um, a lot of our clients will ask us, well, how, what's an Ayurvedic cleanse? And we always point them to life spa and say, this is, this is it. It's, it's laid out so beautifully for everybody. And what a gift that you've given everybody by putting that out there like that. So well, there's two things that I think, you know, so many reasons why the, the cleanse works, but I think one of the things, you know, talking about that inner calm is that you're not having to, it's not a knockdown drag out endurance event, mm -hmm. like most cleanses, it's comfortable. And if you are uncomfortable or hungry, we give you opportunities and different strategies to actually eat. Because if you're stressed out and, and, and you know, and starving, that just creates more stress, more fat storing, as opposed to we're trying to get the fats to be burned and release not only toxins, but old molecules of emotion and release on a really, really deep level. And when you do the ghee cleanses, you know, studies show that, that ghee actually increases stem cells, which are these cells that rebuild and rejuvenate and repair and restore the body. And the, the, and the dosages of ghee that we use have actually been proven scientifically to actually boost stem cell activation. So you're getting you know, a level of deep rejuvenation without the drag out, knock down, scrape your body clean of every toxin. And you're so exhausted from that cleanse, you just snap right back to eating all the bad food because you've been so deprived. Right. You know? And then you just never really gain any long-term benefit. The Ayurvedic approach was just like kind and gentle. And they understood how delicate the intestinal tract and these bugs are. Their bugs are really delicate. And they're super specific about what, 
is there and what their environment is like. And Ayurveda is all about, and the ghee provides an environment for the intestinal tract for the right bugs to grow. It heals and seals that intestinal lining. And it's so critical and important to know that you don't have to go into this knockdown, drag out thing. You're definitely eating on a cleanse. You definitely know that, but you're not starving. Um, you know, I would say you're maybe you're a little bored from not eating all the food you like, but right. once you get into the groove of burning fat, all of a sudden, all that craving just goes away and you realize that you don't have to be, you know, how many live their day and days in and days out based on eating? I, you know, the brain is just like, what am I going to eat next? And I got to eat this and I got to eat their life revolves around food. But when you're burning fat, your life revolves around everything else. Like you have, a, you have a stable platform. You're not craving, you know, and all of a sudden that's sort of how we evolved, right? The monkeys were always eating because they didn't have anything sustainable to eat. So they would just eat bananas and leaves all day long. They couldn't make a house because they had too busy eating bananas and leaves because they had no time. Because you had to eat like half your body weight. The gorillas have to eat like half their body weight and vegetables and fruit leaves every day. Like who has time to make a house? But once we started cooking and getting foods that were more dense and more, more, more dense foods that would deliver energy, we could build houses, you know, and stuff like that. But it's really true. And that means we can also not just go and, you know, we're not, when you're burning fat, you're not so infatuated by getting stimulation from the outside world. You might even take a look at the inner space versus all the crazy outer space. And that's sort of what Ayurveda's whole purpose was, was Vedic, you know, the mm -hmm. Ayurveda, Ayur is life, Veda's truth. It means the truth of your life, not how much stuff I can accumulate, but the truth is your soul. It's all for the purpose of your soul to connect with that deep silent space, which fills us up for no reason. And most of us aren't filled up for no reason. We're only filled up when I get stuff, you know? And right. that, I mean, it sounds crazy to make that, that, that conclusion from ghee, but ghee is one of the most powerful parts of Ayurvedic medicine because it provides that foundation of that, that I, that calm. Anyway, you know, I could go on and on about it. And um, because and I know you guys know all this, but I wanted to say, you know, thank you. And if there's any, is there anything else that we didn't talk about that you guys want to say about Farm True Ghee? It's amazing, 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 amazing product. Oh gosh, I mean, you've said so much about yeah. it. And, you know, we're just, we're still honored to be able to be doing this and, you know, in, especially in the times we're at right now, we're so honored that people are turning to us and I'm sure you feel the same way when they're looking to improve their health and um, their immunity. And so we're just really happy to still be able to do what we love and which is share the wisdom of Ayurveda and put it into some beautiful ghee and, um, yeah, I don't, I feel like we've said a lot <laughs> and we're really happy yeah. to, to be able to be a part of the cleanse and, um, you know, just be on people's journeys with them in that way. Yeah. All right. Kim Welch, Lynn Goodwin, Farm True Ghee. Thank you guys so much for what you guys do. Um, and we'll talk soon. Thanks for, thanks for coming on. I really appreciate it. Great. Thank thanks you so much. Do you like this video? Don't forget to subscribe and share. This recording is brought to you by LifeSpa, where ancient Ayurvedic wisdom meets modern science. Get access to free health video newsletters by Dr. John at LifeSpa.com. These statements have not been evaluated by the FDA. These products are not intended to diagnose, treat, cure, or prevent any disease.